In this video, we're going to look at offset sketches and using datum planes. I'm going to explain why you'd want to use one or the other. And it's very important that you understand how to do offset sketches because we don't want to use faces to create our sketches on at the moment. The topological naming issue is one where if you use faces to set up sketches, when you change the model, the number or the reference to the face changes and you basically you will lose your reference and so the model will break. So we're going to use offset sketches and we offset them from the plane so you won't have that problem. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we go. Uh, one thing I want to mention first, I am using the latest stable release. It's 0.19.1 is what they call it. And it is this 24276 from the Git. Um, and the release date is the 11th of March. So this is the latest download I am using. And I know it's the latest download because I just downloaded it because I had to rebuild my laptop because the thing was dying on me. So I rebuilt it and reinstalled all my software. Um, so I'm actually going through the setup at the moment. So if some things look a little different on my screen, it might be because I reinstalled all the software. One other thing I wanted to mention, I am using, if you look down here, I am using the Blender um, setup for my mouse. When you install FreeCAD, you get the CAD setup for your mouse. All that does is it, it changes how the mouse works. So your left button, your right button, and your wheel will work differently depending on which one of these you choose. I choose Blender because I use Blender. In fact, this video is being edited in Blender. Um, all of my animations in my video are all done in Blender. And as you've probably seen by some of my videos, we have some, um, some rendering in Blender and some animation of assemblies in Blender that I've done. So I like to use Blender that way. My mouse is the same way for FreeCAD as it is for Blender for the most part. So just wanted to point that out. Somebody did mention it to me um, that you will automatically go into the CAD version if you just use the defaults. So if, if for some reason your mouse is not doing what mine is, it's because I'm in the Blender version and you might be in the CAD version. Okay, with that being said, we're going to work on the same model that we had for um, part two. And so we're just going to open that up and use that model. Now, if you don't have that, if you didn't, if you didn't do part two already, um, what you can do is you can just use any uh, box, any uh, just model anything that's a you know box shape, and that'll be fine. Now, one thing to point out: I have seen some discussion around workbenches. I always start out in the part design workbench, so I change my defaults. If you go to preferences here and you look at the general so you're on the general tab here general down here it says startup auto load module after startup and you can choose which workbench it should really say auto load workbench but <laughs> so you can choose the workbench that you want to load up so i'm loading up the part design one by default the system loads up start but i like it to load up part design so that's what why mine is in part design when i start out because when i start freecad it starts in part design so again just be aware that sometimes when you start your file you might start into that start interface you need to change up here to the part design and then you'll be in the same workbench also note that you can move these uh, tools around. So for instance, if your tools are not in the same place as mine, you can see I can move my tools around here and have them in a different order. So they may not be in exactly the same spot as mine, but you will have these same tools. Okay, so those are things to, to think about. So with that, all that being said, Hopefully that answers a lot of questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. 
And if you're having any issues, let me know what those are. I'll do my best to help you if I can. Okay, so this model should be familiar to you. Basically, uh, looks a little bit like a fishy thing, but that's what we created before. And we created that from a sketch, remember? And again, for people who are beginners to this, sometimes it's uh, a mystery as to where everything has gone. And if I show you this pad, if I click on it, highlight it, if I hit the space bar, it will disappear. Then you can see the sketch here. This is the sketch that created that pad. If I hit the space bar on that, now there's my sketch. And if I wanted to change that sketch, I just double click it. And there's the sketch that we originally started with. Now I'm not going to change it. I just, just wanted to show you how to access that. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to go back to my sketch here, hit the space bar. That turns it off, go back to my pad, hit the space bar, and that turns it on. Now what I want to do is I'm going to create a piece that runs along this side. And to do that, we're going to create a sketch. And I want it to be, I want it to run along this side here. So it's going to be in that XZ plane. So that plane there, I can select it there, or I can select it over here, and I can say OK. Now my drawing is in that XZ plane. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box. I'm going to create that box this size. Now remember, we can't see this because the model is in the way. I can use this um, guy here, which is the switch between section view and full view. And I'm going to press that. Now I can see my sketch in full view. All right. Sorry, sorry, now I can see my sketch in a sectional view, but my sketch is, is fully visible. That's what I meant to say. All right, so let's just, um, we're going to do some very simple constraints here just to lock this down so that we're using a constrained sketch. So we make that symmetrical, and then we're just going to give it a couple of quick dimensions. And for the sake of this um, model, I really don't care what those dimensions are. I'm just going to demonstrate something for you, but I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so we got a little bit more space here. And I'm actually gonna move this whole thing up a little bit. And I'm gonna dimension a line from here, this center point to the end point. And we'll call that eight millimeters. And there we have it, that is a constrained sketch. So I just added a couple of uh, dimensions and some symmetry and we are all constrained. So I can close that. And then let's look at our model and there's the sketch visible in our model and it's right in the middle there. So if I were to do a pad now, if I pad that, it's going to pad in the middle. I want the pad to be down here on this line here. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to my sketch. That's this sketch here, selected here. And in this bottom uh, window here, there is an attachment for the sketch. I'm going to click that. And then under that is position. Click that. And now I can see my X, Y, and Z position of this sketch. So if I go into Z, remember the way this sketch is, it's in two dimensions, X and Y, and Z is going to be back and forth. So if I go into Z and I start to move that, you can see that the sketch is actually moving. So I'm going to keep moving it all the way down to this side. And if I remember correctly, it's about 40 millimeters to the middle. Yep. So now the sketch is right on that edge. 
So I've moved the sketch from where it was. I've offset it by 40 millimeters. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my pad and say pad. And of course, I want it to pad in reverse because I want it to go up the side of that guy. And I'm going to make that 25 long just for grins and giggles. OK, so now I have a pad where I wanted it. And if you look closely here, the reason we got a line here and here is because that sketch is on the same face, the same plane as that face. So we're exactly the same. If you don't like this bottom line, there is a way to get rid of that line. And you simply go back to your sketch. Remember, once you created the pad, remember the sketch is underneath there. So I'm going to go back to the sketch. And instead of that being... 40, I'm going to make it 39.99. And if you watch when I tab off here, that disappears because I am now a very minute amount of a step there. But you're still going to have this line here because that's where the, sh the model shows. So that's great. If I want to do one pad and I want to put it there, that's, that's a brilliant solution for that because it won't break with the topological name in. But now what if I wanted to put a hole in the edge of this block that didn't go all the way through? So it's not going to be part of the first sketch. It has to be a unique sketch. So I can do this. I can say, do another sketch. Put it on that same plane that we picked before. Draw a circle. Let's say we want it to go here. going to use this sectional view again so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to put a dimension on that and I'm going to call that oh I put a block constraint on it by mistake so I'm going to get rid of that I deleted that and so as I was saying before about these icons if if they're hidden away you get this little line here that lets you open them up so i didn't do that and i missed that this and this and this are very similar looking and i missed that it was that one instead of this one so i actually want this one i want to give it a dimension so i'm going to call it five and I'm going to align this with this vertically and I'm going to give it a dimension from here to here. We'll call it 13. That's fine. So now if I turn that off, yeah, it's inside there. So now I have a drawing here which I could do the same thing with the sketch. I could go in here, change its attachment position to the front of that guy. So I can bring it here and then I can pad or, or pocket it back this way. Now that starts to get a bit laborious because what if I wanted to do a different shape hole that went to a different depth? So it has to be its own sketch again. It's not going to be fun. So there is a way around that. So instead of creating this sketch the way I just did, I'm going to delete that sketch. And I'm going to create a datum plane that sits back here. So to create a plane, I can create new datum plane. And of course, I don't want it to be there. I can go back to my model and I can select this origin. And remember, you hit spacebar and it shows you the actual origin of the model. So if I go back to where my um, to where my date and plane is going to be attached, I'm going to hit this guy and I'm going to attach it to the X, Z plane. So now it's attached there. 
And then I'm going to offset this in this direction, the same as we did the sketch. I'm just doing that for the plane. So now I'm going to take that plane to 40. So now the plane is right on the edge there. So I can say, OK. Now I have a datum plane, and I'm going to turn off this origin so all those planes go back off because we don't need to see them now. So I'm going to turn those off. So that's our datum plane right there. Now if I want to create a sketch, I say create a sketch. It still shows me these sketch planes, but it's also showing me that datum plane. So if I highlight that datum plane and I click it, you'll see it selects datum plane here. And I say OK. Now I'm drawing right on that datum plane. So I can, I'm going to zoom in there a little bit. And we are going to some reason my icons went all crazy in that one too so i don't know why that was the case to be honest so we are going to sketch we're going to sketch that's probably because i moved it around in the other one so we are going to sketch a circle here we'll put it in the center we'll give it that dimension this time i'll pick the right one of those Call it five, is what we said, and then we'll just give it a dimension from here to here. That's fine. Say close, and then I'm going to say pocket, and I'm going to pocket it. Let's say this one we want to go in 10 mil, and now we want to different hole that only goes five mil deep so i'm going to do another sketch pick that datum plane say okay and then this time i'm going to zoom in here i'm going to put in a little square and we will just say this and this are equal we'll give one of those a dimension doesn't the, the actual dimension doesn't matter we're just going with whatever it happened to draw it and then we want to go from here to here add a dimension again we'll just go with whatever it draws at and we'll go from here to here add a dimension and now our little guy is completely constrained say close pocket we're only going to go five with that one so now i have a plane that i can create sketches on to create these different depth holes into my model and if i want to see it without that date and plane on remember you just click on the date and plane over here hit space bar and that will disappear so now you can see i have two different depth holes and they're drawn from a datum plane. So the reason you'd want to use a datum plane is if you're going to do multiple sketches from the same place, use a datum plane makes it much easier. If you're just doing one sketch from a, a certain place, you can just do an offset sketch. You can just, instead of creating a plane and then creating a sketch, you can just offset the sketch itself. Of course, I could offset all three sketches, but that adds extra work. So hopefully that helps in creating a model with um, pieces that are not just uh, a projected sketch in one direction. So this sketch is projected in this direction. So now you can make uh, different cross members here and it doesn't have to be all one piece. Um, one of the features that you can do here is if you take this back part and just add, um, if we just add a chamfer, we can chamfer this thing So that give it a little bit of a feature. So there you go. So again, you can see how to create uh, 
models and you build up from this type of concept, you can build up to a complex model. Now, finally, I want to save this file. So I'm going to save it as, and I'm going to call this one third file because we had first file, second file, third file. I actually already have one called third file, but I'm just going to overwrite it. And so we can use that in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would subscribe to the channel, if you haven't done so already, and please take a look at our affiliate links below. That helps the channel. If you buy something from uh, those links, that will really help us uh, in buying the bits and pieces we need to make these videos even better. Thanks.